RPGs can be overwhelming with all the stats, skills and builds. So why not try lit RPGs? The authors do all the work for you. Lit RPG, or literary role playing game, no one ever calls it that, is a genre of media where the story takes place in a world with RPG like mechanics. Examples of these mechanics include things like leveling, skills, or a health system. Despite lit RPGs being based on video games, a lot of them don't take place in video games. Shocking, I know. Many of them just exist in a world that's governed by an RPG system. Your average lit RPG goes like this. The main character is either transported to a lit RPG world or has just gained access to the system. Often, they have a unique ability or weapon that separates them from the fodder. They are put into situations where they have to fight things or solve puzzles. By doing this, they level up. In turn, leveling up grants stats, abilities and skills. As the story progresses, they form friendships and gather items. Character growth is a big part of this because the main character is literally changing as they level up, adapting mentally to their strength. Also, in the well written stories, the characters grow from their interactions with others. There's usually a main goal, like escaping a game or saving the world. If you like the sound of all that, then lit RPGs are probably the right fit for you. Lit RPG is a rather broad genre, since it can be blended with any genre of games, like sci-fi, fantasy or fighting. Hell, there's probably a dating game lit RPG out there. Since world building is a huge part of regular sci-fi and fantasy media, there's a lot of that in here too. Where did it all begin? Whilst the term lit RPG was coined around 2013 and the genre has had a big boom in popularity in the last decade, the earliest lit RPG like book I could find is from 1983. Guardians of the Flame by Joel Rosenberg. This book series is about a group of university students who were playing a tabletop RPG game and were transported into a fantasy world similar to the game they were playing. As you can see, lit RPG is a rather young genre when compared to other genres such as romance, which has been around for thousands of years. This is obviously because RPGs didn't exist back then. The first true and influential lit RPG genre media came around the 2010 to 2015 period, with stories like the infamous Sword Art Online by Eric Kawahara from 2009, where players are trapped in a game where if they die in the game, they die in real life. Or the Way of the Shaman series by Vasily Mahanenko from 2012, where the main character is imprisoned in a game for a crime and wants to find a way out. These stories laid out a foundation for future authors to build off of. In 2018, the Ready Player One film was released. It was an adaptation of the book, and I'd say that this was the first mainstream lit RPG, not counting Jumanji. He used tropes such as levels, skills, and the setting of a VR MMORPG world, like a lot of lit RPG stories do, whilst Jumanji did not have most of these elements. Even to this day, the lit RPG genre is growing and new stories are being created, such as the fairly new Dungeon Crawler Carl, which I will be talking about later. Most stories don't only have one genre, authors use a blend of genres to make the story more intriguing and unique. So with this in mind, lit RPGs fit very well with certain other genres. Here are some popular combinations. Fantasy, a genre that most of you are probably familiar with. It includes magical or supernatural elements that don't exist in the real world, such as magic or races like goblins. This is usually set in a medieval setting. For an example, see Salvos. Science fiction, a genre that includes futuristic concepts like space and advanced technology such as laser rifles. See Iron Prince. Cultivation, a genre inspired by Chinese mythology where people get stronger through meditation and cultivation of power. See He Who Fights With Monsters. Dungeon Core, a genre that focuses on a sentient dungeon core and managing a dungeon. See Divine Dungeon. My favourite lit RPG has got to be Dungeon Crawler Carl. This will include spoilers, so if you don't want to be spoiled, skip to- Dungeon Crawler Carl is a lit RPG system apocalypse. Aliens have collapsed all the buildings on Earth and killed everyone inside. 
The ones left are given a choice. Enter the newly appeared staircases underground or stay above the ground and try to survive. The people who go into the underground are put into a game show that the whole universe is watching. They have to survive different challenges whilst also making sure to not get killed by other participants. Carl and his girlfriend's cat, Donut, participate in the game show and Donut gains sentience. There are 18 floors and each floor the participants are given different rewards and sponsors. The higher their view account, the better the rewards. That's the basic synopsis I'll give. Forgive me if I forgot anything, it's been a while since I read it. But the new book is coming out soon. Now, I really enjoy this series for many reasons. Carl and Donut are both engaging and fun characters to read about. Donut acts like a pompous princess, but only acts like this for the viewers. She has a softer interior hiding beneath. Carl is very easy to relate to and I like his attitude towards the organisers of the game show. Humour and action are both very abundant in the story. The progression in Dungeon Crawler Carl is pretty standard for a lit RPG of skills and classes, but that doesn't mean it's bad. You expect many fights and jokes from both the organisers and the characters. The world building however is amazing. I'm a big fan of the reveals about how the different organisations and governments work. My favourite moment is how Carl killed Loiter and how he accomplished it using a toy that the sponsors gave him. Overall, I think it's the best planned out and interesting lit RPG. Let's talk about the pros and cons of the genre. I'm gonna get the cons out of the way. The largest issue I have with a lot of lit RPGs is when the author focuses on the mechanics too much. The start of a lit RPG is usually the point where the writing is the strongest. The mechanics are introduced and the viewer is engaged in a rapid growth of the characters, but the moment the growth is slowed and the family numbers don't go up as fast, it becomes a slog to read. Keep in mind, this is only for the stories where the characters aren't written well. Relying on the mechanics to carry a story is what sacrifices the characters. For example, I was reading Defiance of the Four. Zack has barely any personality and it made me lose interest at points when the story slowed down. I loved the world building in the story, but the characters themselves did not appeal to me. An example of the opposite would be in Salvos, where characters such as Sal, my favourite character, made this story genuinely fun to read. Along the same lines, a lot of late RPGs have a very strong beginning and fall off. I think this is because, as I said earlier, the viewer is distracted by all the new and shiny system introductions. After they're done, the real writing reveals itself. Because of the stats, leveling and achievements, some lit RPGs are just dopamine dispensers. You read on and on and on just to get that bit of dopamine from seeing the main character unlock the next ability. I don't like this, but it's a part of why I read them, honestly. The pros. The inclusion of strategy. I love it when the authors have their characters solve problems strategically using their spells or skills. When you have a character beat someone stronger than them by using strategy, it makes the story so much better. The world building is probably the strongest aspect of lit RPGs. Learning how the world is balanced around a system existing is always a fun part of starting a new lit RPG. Now that I'm done shitting on Defiance of the Four, I've got to admit, the world building around the factions and also the independent stronger characters such as the Great Redeemer is some of the best world building I've seen in a lit RPG. Due to the nature of lit RPGs, there is a lot of action. I like action. A big criticism I have seen from people is that using RPG mechanics is lazy because everything is simplified into numbers. I personally don't agree with this because it takes a lot of effort to come up with a consistent and balanced RPG system. It's just a different type of difficult. Lit RPG, like any genre, has some issues, but the good ones that are out there are really good. If you're new to the genre and want to give it a go, I will leave a list of some of the ones I recommend in the description. Whether you're watching this video with prior knowledge of lit RPGs or you wanted to find out about them, I hope it served you well. I made this video because a year and a half ago I got totally hooked on lit RPGs and I've been reading them ever since. Maybe I'll make some more lit RPG content in the future, or web novels. I think there's a niche there I could fill. If you have any feedback or want to give me any suggestions then be sure to let me know in the comments. If you liked the video then I would appreciate it if you could give it a like. It lets the algorithm know that my videos are worth watching. See ya.